And before that, allow me to introduce uh, the next session is called Application of Technologies to Enhance Navigational Safety, Port Call Optimization and Smart Ships. Just some uh, housekeeping before we move on to the panel. So just a reminder that the Trace Together app that you have should be activated and uh, you should have checked in by now. Uh, this applies for all of the SMW events for ID purposes and entry to all sessions and functions. Please assist us by wearing your name badges at all times. Safe management, measure, uh, safe management ambassadors have been deployed for your safety and request your cooperation to adhere to the SMMs also. And Please adhere to the specific timings for refreshments and visitation of exhibition booths. And if you have any questions, feel free to approach our staff as well. Allow me to introduce our speaker who will be sharing with us on the application of technologies to enhance navigational safety, port call optimization, and smart ships. May we now invite Francis Zakaria, Secretary General, International Association of Marine Aids, to Navigation and Lighthouse Authorities, IALA, to deliver his speech. Let's welcome Secretary General. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kwa and Captain Sigar, our good friends from uh, Singapore MPA, <laughs> and distinguished uh, participants uh, in this room and uh, online all over the world. Uh, I must say it's uh, wonderful to be back in a physical meeting. I think I had uh, online meetings and webinars enough for a whole life. And uh, it's, it's really good to be back and meet colleagues and, and good friends here in, in, in Singapore. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about uh, Ayala and our work for maritime efficiency and uh, safety. And this short intervention, I can of course only scratch the surface, but I hope to give you interest in learning more about uh, the organization and our work, and maybe even be a member uh, at a later stage. Uh, we are based in France, uh, and we have 89 uh, countries, uh, authorities as our members. <clears throat> we have 155 um, in, uh, industrial members, manufacturers of H2 navigation, and we have 60 associate members mainly uh, universities and research institutes. Um, we deal with uh, marine age navigation and of course 50, um, 60, more than 60 years ago in 1957 it started with boys and lighthouses but it has of course developed enormously into the digital area and you can see that an age of navigation in our definition is much more than a physical a boy or lighthouse, it's a device, system or service external to a vessel and designed uh, for, uh, for efficiency and safety of, of navigation. So it also encompasses uh, VTS, for instance, vessel traffic services and all the digital infrastructure solutions in, in ports and coastal states. You can see it's external to a vessel and that makes us uh, complementary to uh, the IMO and IHO. IMO is more of ship construction and uh, education of the crew, and IHO is uh, the hydrography, hydrography organization. We have two main goals in IALA, and, and one of them is to develop and harmonize. We have heard a lot about standards and harmonization here uh, this morning, uh, and that is what we are here for. Ayala, we harmonize age to navigation and develop. And the second goal is that all coastal states in the whole world, not only our members, have a global network of efficient age to navigation. And that is our worldwide academy uh, doing edu education and capacity building in uh, all over the world in developing countries. Uh, generously sponsored, uh, uh, one of our main sponsors is uh, Singapore MPA but we have, of course, many other uh, sponsors. But we are very grateful for, for that, of course. If we look at development and harmonization, I have these two pictures just to show what I'm, I'm talking about. To your left, you have development, 
Uh, Ayala is uh, famous for many of our developments throughout the years. We were one of the main uh, technical organizations uh, developing AIS uh, at that time. Uh, we have completely developed uh, uh, DDNSS, DDPS, and also the maritime buoy system, of course, the Ayala buoy system, uh, red to port, starboard, Ayala A and B is uh, developed in, in Ayala, of course. To your right, <clears throat> it's just an illustration, uh, something that is definitely not harmonized, the electric plugs here, if you travel from Europe uh, to, to Singapore, you, you feel the problem and, and see how irritating it is if, if things are not harmonized. And that, that cannot work in the maritime sector because the maritime sector is truly global and we need uh, worldwide uh, solutions for, for the maritime sector. I will use as uh, a basis uh, a big uh, workshop we had last year uh, uh, organized by Ayala in, in co-host co with the Japan Coast Guard. Uh, hundreds of people were together uh, discussing uh, marine age to navigation with a broad definition I, I talked to you about in the autonomous world. So what will the future bring? And they, they came up with these uh, seven uh, conclusions. One of them was of course an important one. Will there still be a need for traditional physical age to navigation in the autonomous world? And the answer was clearly yes. For many, many years ahead, we will have the need for buoys and lighthouses and all the traditional age to navigation. And the other conclusions I could divide into four uh, big groups. The first uh, <clears throat> interest and also concern of our members in Ayala was the future of Mars. Uh, it, it's very difficult actually to say what is the future of Mars. Is it just enormously hyped? We are all talking about Mars. We have uh, Mars everywhere. Is it just enormously hyped? Or is there a real future for autonomous ships? And I think our membership is divided into two groups. Uh, and, and of course, many in between. <laughs> Some say, well, not in the near future, at least. We will not see big uh, ships without a crew navigating the oceans in the near future. And then we have the other group saying that it's just around the corner. Uh, Mars is the future. We will see it uh, very shortly. And of course, there are all, always a discussion in, in between of these two. Will the age to navigation have to change to support the mass ships or will it be the other way around? Does mass, mass ships have to adapt to the uh, age navigation we have now? So there are many, many discussions here and, um, and um, we, have, we have to position ourselves in, 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 in this discussion. But one thing is completely sure. You see that there are many arguments. I, I heard the mask, the mask CEO say that unmanned container ships not in my lifetime and other People say it's a breakthrough year, it will be here soon, the pilots are not convinced about the future of Mars, etc. Et so there are many views on this, but one thing is completely sure is that we can learn from aviation and we study that carefully in, in Ayala. And for your information, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21 was not as safe, but 2017 was the safest year in the history of aviation. There were only 10 accidents out of uh, 40 million takeoffs. And alone in Europe, there are 4,000 accidents a year in the maritime sector. So uh, something, uh, we can learn something from aviation and they have succeeded in the digitalization. And don't forget that in the mass definition, there are several layers of autonomy. So you have the unmanned, and then you have assisted navigation, many, many layers of assisted navigation. And we strongly believe in that in Ayala. We believe that we can digitalize the maritime sector and make it safer and more efficient. And, and that's what we, we work on. The next uh, thing that they mentioned at the workshop was, and we have heard a lot about that this morning, and that's really, really, really important, I think. The need for harmonization and standards, because as I mentioned, the maritime sector is completely global 
and we need global solutions for all the digital um, issues that we try to implement. And unfortunately, we have seen uh, a lot of regional and local solutions around the world in the last 10, 15 years. We have actually a working group, we had a working group in Ayala studying all these regional solutions and try to harvest the, uh, the, the best uh, things from these regional solutions and try to turn them into global standards. Very, very complicated actually. We have the, the big and successful Sesame Strait uh, concept here in, in Singapore. And we have many other uh, regional solutions around the world, many of them in Europe, uh, funded by the European Union. And they're all very, very successful, but they build on different standards. Uh, and, and that is not good for the, uh, for the global e-navigation e concept of the maritime sector. And, and we need to do something about that. We have engaged in a, in a, in a big, it's, it's only a, a concept project, project at the moment, we have engaged in Ayala in the Our Species of Digital at Sea conferences. Uh, the next one will be in, in Tampa, Florida in May, the 10th of May. You are, you're very welcome. And uh, during these conferences, we have now engaged in a, in a very big and ambitious concept initiated by the Ministry of Ocean and Fishery in Korea. And the idea is to try to uh, establish a, a worldwide test bed to see if you can actually combine all these regional solutions and uh, make one uh, harmonized standard for a ship, trans for a ship uh, route from Asia to Europe, for instance. Uh, a completely seamless uh, route with no uh, administrative burdens, uh, pilots, uh, route optimization, uh, so everything could run uh, congestion in the Suez Canal, everything in, in one uh, using the maritime connectivity platform uh, and all the um, information you have available uh, during that route. It's a very ambitious project, but we will now try to establish uh, the, the foundation for, for that. An important thing is that the big, the major international organizations, they have to work better together to, to get these uh, standards. It's a very complicated job, actually. It, it seems very easy, but they are not very good at working together. And that's, that's a pity, and we need to do something about that. It's complicated, but we, we, will, we will go there. The next thing they were concerned about at the conference, and we have also talked a lot about that uh, this morning, was resiliency. And, and in our technical organization, it's, it's a concern of a resilient position navigation and timing system. Because most ships today, if not all, <laughs> are completely dependent on, on DNSS, GPS, satellite navigation. And I tell you, these systems are very vulnerable. We have not seen a major breakdown yet, but of course we will sometime in the future. And uh, that will be a disaster. Because if we have increased dependence on automated systems, maybe even unmanned ships, and there might be a decline in traditional navigational skills in the future that gives rise to main, major concern uh, with our members. So we need to establish some resilient systems that can assist uh, the ship's uh, dependency on GPS and satellite systems. Because natural and man-made disasters or jamming or spoofing is very, very easy. I heard for, for 10 euros you can actually buy a GPS jammer uh, on the internet. Uh, and we see examples of that more and more in, in the world. We have many interesting projects that's under the development uh, arm of Fayella, and we have many interesting projects that can solve this problem. We have R mode, VDS R mode, we have LTM 5G solutions, signals of opportunity, and we have a whole working group that tried to develop these uh, uh, solutions uh, worldwide. We will also initiate a, a maritime service in the IMO in the future on resilient uh, PNT. The last one, uh, the last point that was mentioned by, by the group last year was management of ship traffic and, and VTS. And I believe strongly that uh, VTS will have a fantastic future. It has developed a lot from the beginning, only 
25, 30 years ago until now, but it will be even more important in the future because we will see more and more management of ships from ashore. It's a very delicate question. I know if you talk to old mariners, they will hate to see the control of the ship moving from the bridge to a center ashore. But of course, this will happen more and more in the future, especially when uh, if there's no crew on board the ship, it has to be controlled from, from ashore. So why not utilize these very, very efficient uh, centers? We already have the VTS centers ashore and they will have a much more important role in the future. Uh, we, have, we have just finalized a new resolution on VTS. I will say that Ayala is nowadays the international organization for VTS. We are the only international organization that makes guidelines and uh, recommendations for VTS. And we have drafted the new resolution that has just been uh, approved by the IMO on VTS and replaced the old 85720. And this new resolution is future proof. Uh, it accommodates, for instance, uh, VTS beyond territorial waters. Uh, so it is actually ready for all the new developments in the VTS uh, services around uh, the world. So these were the four main points I would like to, to mention today uh, on, on efficiency and safety of ships. The last point I just want to, to mention here very quickly is that Ayala is now transforming from an NTO, we are an NTO at the moment, into an ITO, just like uh, IMO and IHO and other intergovernmental organizations. It has been a, a project started in 2010 and we are now very close to uh, finalizing this project. Uh, the uh, convention text was agreed in Kuala Lumpur in 2020. 20, and uh, there's been a one year signature period in Paris and it has now been signed by 51 states and five of them, including Singapore, has already ratified the convention and many more will follow here in the next uh, month. Uh, and Ayala will be an ITO as soon as 30 states have ratified the convention. So quite soon within the next uh, few years, I, I hope. And that will make Ayala a peer organization to the IMO, ITU and many other organizations. But we will still be technical recommendatory and we will still input our main uh, things into the IMO for as the big regulatory uh, organization, maritime organization of, of the world. Here's just a picture of the ambassador from Singapore uh, signing the convention in uh, Paris during the uh, pandemic. We were not able to travel, so the, the convention was signed by many ambassadors in, in Paris. And uh, Singapore, efficient as they are, uh, signed and ratified uh, at the same day. So <laughs> that's a good example for other states. And uh, please, if your country, if your state, uh, has not uh, signed or ratified the convention, please uh, help us in uh, making this uh, um, project a success for the efficiency and safety of maritime transportation. Thank you very much for your patience. It has been a pleasure and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Thank you. Thank you.